Hi there, this is my final tag for uh, my 12 tags of 2013 challenge, or should I say Tim Holtz's 12 tags of 2013 challenge, and uh, this is the tag that Tim made, so this is the inspiration, and uh, let's see uh, where I end up with my interpretation. Although the embossing folder I've used isn't quite the same as Tim's, I think mine's by Creative Expressions, and uh, he used one of his own. It's still got the clocks on it, and I'm just going to trim my 3x6 piece of paper into a tag. So to pick up on all the detail on the tag that was created by the embossing, I'm going to go over it just like uh, Tim did with the Iced Spruce Distress Ink. I'm also going to be using the Rusty Hinge and a little bit of Pumice Stone. So the nice thing about inking after you've embossed is that it picks up and emphasises all the lovely detail that you've created by running it through your embossing machine. So I'm just adding a little bit of pumice stone. Then darkening up the iced spruce. I did think at that point maybe I might just do it completely tonal and just go for all the greys. But um, I do like the idea of the orange and grey combination. So I'm going to use the rusty hinge. And then I'm just splattering the inked surface with some water just to create a little bit of texture and then drying it off with my heat gun. And looking at Tim's tag, I'm definitely going to carry on with the clock theme, the theme of time, because that seems really appropriate for a New Year's tag. And in essence, that's what my tag is about to become. It was uh, supposed to be made at the beginning of this year. And I really didn't think I was going to have the time to play along with uh, Tim's 12 tags of 2013. But I had so much fun with the 12 tags of 2012. I really couldn't resist. Once I started to see people's tags appearing on their blogs, I just had to play along. And I've been playing catch up ever since. Not only did I decide to play along, as you can see, but I also decided to make a video for each one of the tags that I made this year. And uh, it's turned into quite a collection of, of little insights into how anybody might get from Tim's inspiration to their very own interpretation. And I think that's been the fun part for me of this challenge overall. I don't always have the products that Tim's got and uh, that also helps lead you in different directions and uh, really makes you put your creative thinking cap on so i really enjoy the uh, 12 tags challenges and uh, i'm thinking seriously that if tim does a 2014 uh, that i probably will play along might not make videos this time but uh, i definitely think i'll uh, treat myself to a little bit of fun where you just get to play and uh, completely go wherever your imagination takes you. So as you can see, I'm having a good old look at the kinds of things that I might use on my tag. And uh, I think that I'd quite like to make a watch. So I'm going to be using some of this packaging. I think it would make a nice uh, watch face. I always keep hold of some of these uh, little unusual pieces of packaging because they come in very handy. So I'm distressing the edges of my tag. And I'm just using my scissors to do this. And it always helps to support the edge of the tag as you uh, distress the edges to make sure you don't go too wild. I thought it might be quite nice to do a little bit of gilding. Um, I don't want to do anything too um, formal, so I'm just going to keep it quite fluid. I'm just adding a couple of little tears to my tag and rolling back the edges before I begin. And all the time I'm thinking about where I'm going to position 
the elements that I'm collecting together for this one. I haven't really got any idea. Sometimes I do a little sketch of a, a tag or an idea for a tag that I might have, but this one is purely coming together as you see it on the video. And now I'm taking my little pot of gilding glue. This is one by um, Cosmic Shimmer. And it's got a very tiny little brush, brush, which is quite good for just adding small bits of gilding to your projects. And I'm literally being quite random. I'm not trying to get a perfect border all the way around. I'm also going to put some glue inside the bevel of this little piece of packaging, which will form the, um, I don't know what you call the outside bit. Is that called the bezel of a watch? Um, the actual bit that surrounds the face of a watch, if bezel isn't the right word. And I'm also going to just brighten up my uh, metal elements that I'm going to use on my tag just to make sure that the copper and the silver is nice and bright because the tag's quite light in colour. And then I'm going to take the little gilding brush and uh, add some random spots of gilding glue to these elements as well. Now before you begin gilding you have to make sure that this glue dries and it dries clear and it feels tacky to the touch. You don't want to start adding any of the flakes till all of your glue is dry and I decided to put this to one side and work on a different element while that glue was setting. And if you've been watching any of the little videos that I've been making of my last few tags as I catch up with myself this year, you'll notice that on one of them I did a background, a frame for my tag using a book page. And I'm going to do that same effect again. So first of all, I'm just cutting out a circle that I'll be able to put at the back of this clock face. And then I've just got some orange scraps that I'm going to use uh, one which is slightly bigger than my tag, which I'm just going to trim to size. This is going to form the frame of my tag. As you can see, the orange is quite nice against the grey. But I'm going to cover it first with my book pages. And I've got an old dictionary page which just happens to have all the new uh, elements. So it's actually got new year and uh, I managed to capture that in the centre of the clock face that I've already cut out and I'm using the um, Claudine Helmuth multi matte medium to stick my dictionary page to my orange card stock I've also got a little scrap that I'm sticking a piece of the dictionary page to as well and that's what I'll punch the enforcer for the top of my tag out of. I'm just randomly covering the base tag and then I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. making sure everything's glued down and getting rid of the rubbish <laughs> so now it's time to go back to my gilding my glues are dry now this is quite messy if you've never used gilding flakes they have a life of their own and you'll see on the camera that they start to fly about and uh, they just become charged with the static and they can fly anywhere and stick to anything so I'm being as gentle as I can trying not to breathe and definitely trying not to cough or sneeze I'm just using the end of my paintbrush to push the gilding into the bezel of this watch and then I'm going to just put little bits of foil on the tiny areas that I added the um, oops <laughs> <laughs> I've just dropped one of the pieces into the pot. Oh, found it. That's lucky. <laughs> and I'm using the pieces just to pick up some of the pieces that I've dropped in onto my craft mat. So tidying up as I go along. And 
and it may look a complete higgledy piggledy mess at this point and it is so I've just put the pieces of foil um, and they've stuck to the glue now you need to get rid of the excess and I like to do this with a soft bristle brush and I'm just brushing away all the bits that haven't stuck to the uh, foiling glue as you can see this turns the uh, foil flakes into almost a dust now you don't have to throw this away uh, because you can just put it back in the pot and use it it will still work with uh, any future gilding that you may do it's probably best to put all your gilding flakes into a larger container so that you avoid having to clean up um, because all the bits will drop back into the container as you work over it I'm moving back to my um, base tag now so the tag that I'm going to use as a frame for my tag and I'm using the rusty hinge to colour the book page then I'm going around and distressing the edges as I did on the main tag and then I'm coming back in and really darkening that um, edge I've cut out the large circle that is going to be attached to my large clock and I'm again just distressing the edges and darkening them up with my uh, rusty hinge distress ink. So you can see now things are starting to take shape. And I'm just having another think about the composition. I need somewhere where I'm going to put the words so you'll see things will change a little bit as I go along I'm using some glossy accents on the back of this metal clock face and I'm just going to attach that to the card making sure my number 12 is at the top and I'm just going to weigh it down until it's dry adding the little reinforcer to the top of the tag now it's time to create the watch element for my tag so I'm cutting out a clock face that I or a watch face that I printed off from the internet now that I can see the edge of my packaging a little bit better I'm just taking off the excess on the outside edge then I need to glue the clock face in position so I'm just getting off any random foiling that's sitting on the clock face area just scraping it with my fingernail and then I can attach the clock face with a little bit of glossy accents I thought I'd leave this next little section, although I don't end up doing much, I do end up finalising the composition of this tag. So I'm just deciding, because I want to use the little hand that I've already foiled on this watch face, I just have to have a little think about how I'm going to do the other elements. And that led me to this little composition, just about to get to here, which is the final composition, which left the right hand side of my tag the perfect place to add the wording. So I'm just adding the clock face inside the bezel, or the watch face, should I say. And I'm going to assume that my watch needs winding up, so I'm just making a little pearl uh, wind-up button that's going to sit on the top of my watch face. And I'm also adding the hand. So I'm just piercing a hole in the center spot luckily that's marked for me by the printer and then attaching this tiny clock hand in position and then I just thought I'd add a little tiny pearl that one's too big I'm just trying a little teeny tiny one 
and it was at this point that I remembered something that I had from the tag book that we made with Tim Holtz in his workshop this year in the UK. Originally it was designed to hold the tag pages together but it was a little bit too small, I know the feeling, uh, because I had too many embellishments in my tag book by the time I'd finished and it just wasn't quite wide enough. So I put it to one side thinking it will come in handy and it's going to be the perfect strap for this watch. So I'm going to give it some ink, I'm just deciding whether to go orange or grey and uh, I ended up uh, going with the iced spruce as I've got plenty of spots of orange on my uh, tag already so I'm going with the more subtle grey colour. I'm attaching the strap with plenty of strong double-sided tape because it was slightly big for my tag I have cut into it at the back and removed a little bit of the ruler ribbon so I'm going to sit it so that the buckle sits on one side and then the um, clock face or the watch face will be offset and whilst I'm working I'm just going to add some more double sided tape to the back of my tag ready to put the two layers together Before I do that I'm going to add the brads that are going to hold the other elements of my tag. I'm just adding a little bit of glossy accents to make sure this stays in place and then I'm using a brad to hold the pointer or the hand in position on the large clock. I'm adding a cog around the hanger at the top of the tag. Now this doesn't actually work, I started to glossy accent this into place so you'll see that it doesn't come or doesn't stay glued in position and I end up using pin flare to hold it in place. But you can see that it looks quite smart, well I hope you think it does. <laughs> and then I've got these final little elements to attach to this side of the tag. Again, I'm going to be using a long brad. And then with all the brads in place, it's time to attach the tag front to the tag frame. And then I'm just piercing the hole in the top of the tag. and then adding some more pearl embellishments. Now, I do change these in a little while because they're just a little bit big and I preferred the smaller um, pearls so you'll see those change shortly. Now I'm beginning to think about the words that I'm going to put on my tag. Whenever I make my tags I always like to think of some appropriate words to do with uh, either the tag or something that the tag makes me think about and I just thought of a little it's not exactly a poem, a little two-liner that's appropriate for this year, a bit like a um, resolution or a bit like a wish for the year ahead. So may the thoughts in my head continue through the year ahead. And I've mounted the little grey strips onto some more of the orange book page. I'm also going to replace those larger pearls that I said about before with some smaller ones. And then it's time to trim my little word strips. I've also been mulling over how I'm going to put the date of my tag, so January 2013, and little label that says inspired by Tim Holtz. I've done that on each of my tags this year, and um, 
I need to find a little place to put them. So I'm going to start by attaching these words and I'm just sort of following the shape of the clock and I'm not too worried that they're protruding off the side of my tag. I think it looks quite nice. Another element I like to um, add to my tags are some little charms and I think that it'll look nice to hang some charms off the actual watch strap itself. So I've picked out a couple of charms and I'm also just finishing off the two little strips with the date and the inspired by Tim Holtz. And then thinking about where to attach them to the tag. And then I'm going to colour a little strip of American seam binding. So I like to dot it dry first into the ink so I get some dark areas of ink on my ribbon. So I'm starting with the rusty hinge, then I add water and that helps spread the ink on the ribbon. And I'm drying it because I want sort of two definite colours rather than lots of blending of colour. And I've decided not to stamp on it because I want to keep it fairly plain because uh, there's a lot of detail on my tag so I don't think I need too much detail in the ribbon. I do like to be able to use my Distress Inks to colour ribbons to match my projects. It really is a nice uh, finishing touch and I quite like uh, keeping it nice and crinkly as I dry it. So I'm just going to tie a length through the top of the tag. You can see it matches perfectly and then another length around the ribbon itself and that just gives me a little New Year firework effect so I was quite pleased with that and then I decided after all because the charms are going to hang down from the watch strap I'm going to just uh, add these little tags so that they stick out of the side of the tag and in this little box of tricks I've got some little short pieces of chain and broken bits of jewellery and I like to keep them because they do come in handy for making up charms and adding embellishments to other projects. So I'm just going to attach my little crystal and my copper leaf and then I've got a little, I think it's called a crab claw or lobster claw <laughs> and uh, that will attach it to the fastener on my watch. I'm working a little bit off camera here so uh, I tend to do that when things get a little bit fiddly and to bring things towards yourself. So just closing up that last little link and then hoping that the claw fits. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. So I think that is the end. So I did finish this tag this afternoon, probably about three o'clock. Um, I've since waited for the video to upload from my camera and uh, now I'm editing and I've just about finished at seven o'clock so I don't think I've got any chance of getting this uploaded before the new year but I'm going to give it a go um, as soon as I finish editing this final little piece I'm going to press finalize and then I've got to upload so final little tweaks and there we have my 12th and final tag for 2013. So I've done 12 tags of 2013 and I've finished with the one that Tim started with, which is the January tag. So I hope you'll agree that I've completed my 12 tags of 2013, even if I don't get this video posted in time to beat Big Ben striking in 2014. So this is my second year of playing along with the 12 Tags Challenge and I definitely recommend that if Tim Holtz decides to do a 2014 challenge that it is a great fun challenge to take part in. Before I wrap it up for this year, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a great big thank you to you for your support, for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed the projects that I've shared and I look forward to sharing more creativity with you in the new year. 
I'd like to wish you and those you love a healthy, happy and prosperous new year and I look forward to seeing you in 2014. So until then, thank you for watching.